Welcome back, everybody. Thank you for sticking around. We are over in Brazil now. It is Dolson and Kresnik to take you on through it. Kres, uh, Brazil, what looks like could be a contested region, may, may not be a contested region. All I know is Parallax still maybe the team to beat here. Yeah, from how it looked in the first week, for sure, I think. But uh, how all the teams played against each other, I think we actually didn't get to see our first look at right. Fatal Ambition or in control. So those are two kind of unknown quantities going into this. We are going to see Tempest team, the team that lost to the, the newbies last week, I believe, in Ignite, playing against Carnage, a team that... How, how can we tell how they're looking after how amazing Parallax looked in their match last week? I mean, they look like nothing could stop them in Carnage. They were the, the second top dog last time. I wonder if they're going to keep that moving forward, even with losing a Spexy. Yep. Yeah, that's a great point. Uh, you know, we, we didn't get a great barometer uh, on where some of those lopsided opponents ended up here. You'll get a look at the standings. All three O's in week number one over here in Brazil. So Carnage and Tempest team both suffering a 3-0 loss. Going to look to get things rolling here moving forward. You, you look at both of these rosters, both teams off to a rocky start. Uh, you know, 0-3s across the board. Mm -hmm. Who do you maybe favor looking towards this one? Do you, do you think this is Carnage's to really bounce back and get some momentum? I think so, with the amount of experience that they have. Because Tempest, I mean, they've been grinding scrims in Tier 2, Tier 3 for forever, from what I'm hearing from those people grinding there. And they've managed to make their way into the PPC, beating some of the other lower-tier PPC Brazilian teams. I think they have talent, I think they have potential, but I think Carnage have kind of already actualized that from, from right. last season and, and how they've been looking in general. I give them the edge for sure, but I think that Tempest team, they have the mixed roster with the controller and the keyboard. I think that kind of hurts a lot of teams in the draft. If you don't have that utility, the ability to have both Ganchi, the direct damage for Tempest, I think has some, some great chances to get some mm -hmm. good picks in the draft and just pop off, especially on a map like Ice. I mean, you can play more or less anything here. So draft is going to be really important, I think, for both teams. That's kind of the kinetic energy versus potential energy argument here. Carnage Gaming, maybe a little bit more kinetic at the moment. Ice Mine's interesting, I think, to start off a set with Ice Mine's. You know, it, it, depending on the speed that you're looking to go as a team, you can kind of dictate maybe what type of pace you're looking for. Vivian, first off, banned out. What region was it where we didn't see any Corvus last Friday? Maybe I was over in Europe. We, we it was Europe, Corvus yeah. Completely yeah. looked over. Uh, so Brazil maybe not adopting that strategy here just yet. Bomb King, though, a strong ban nonetheless for Tempest team to take away from Ice Mines. Yeah, it's great on this map. He Even with the damage nerf, he's still doing a lot of damage around corner. Still has strong CC on a DPS, which you don't really get. And though that kind of CC can just win you games. Terminus, another Ice Mines ban. Get rid of the Siphon. Don't knock down a whole yeah. choke. You can maybe push past the other options in the Sonara and that. I also, I like how Carnage are just doing the console target. Get rid of Victor Vivian. They're the better console picks on this map. And pick something to get aggressive instead. Any of the other back lines are going to collapse a little bit quicker to an Ash and a Flanker diving in through stage. Yeah, I'm rewinding to what we just saw in set one and the Victor ban. If it didn't make some sense to you before that, it should. Absolutely. Now, Genos makes his way through. Genos has been a very popular ban, at least in one of the four slots throughout a lot of the games we've seen here in the first couple of weeks. So I wonder if maybe one of the two teams opts for him. I know that, that you like to kind of point out, especially on this map, sort of that hit scan pressure through yeah. the gates at the beginning, get some of those dismounts. Geno's certainly good at it. Won't be looked at here through the first three, yeah, though. Ash taken first overall. Way. We started to see her rise to glory a little bit here, Krez. Uh, Atlas maybe for an off-tank answer on the other side. Atlas is a great counter to that Ash, too. So you get rid of the Zin, who's one of the better aggressive flankers to pair with the Ash, then you get the Atlas. So if that Ash decides to shoulder Bash in and try to cross that distance, just hit her with a setback. She's back to where she yep. started, has to wait like 10 seconds to be able to do it again. So a lot of control, potentially, from Tempest. I think they're going to need a strong backline to pair with it. And that's why Car Carnage got rid of that Shaolin. Shaolin with the, with the Sand Trap, that crippling Explosive Arrow to do 1,300 damage. Hit Atlas with that. If one more person's with you, get pushed with one more DPS, suddenly that Atlas can't rewind, and he's taking a lot of damage, especially if you push right through his stasis field. I mean, and that, you look at the Fernando now that Tempest have lopped on to that frontline pile. Two of the, the strongest, highest potential maybe frontlines we have here at the moment. So I think Tempest have got to be happy with what they've gotten as far as their front line goes. Grover there, the Whirlwind, for some great spot healing as well when that comes up. Barrack Ash on the other side. This will be an interesting front line duel to watch. 
yeah, a lot of damage being traded on point. It's going to be Nando, the point tank that does no damage, and Merrick, the point tank that gave up all his sustain just to have a crumb of damage trading into that. And Talus is going to be good to pair with him, too. If that if that Nando has to rotate and track down the Talus while he's pushing in, he might be able to get some damage past that shield, make that Aegis just a little bit less useful. And, of course, he's going to pair very well with that Genos. 15% more damage will help significantly. Strix, I said they needed a good backline to play behind that Atlas. I think they got it. It's a lot of pre pressure on Ganchi, I would say, to hit a Talus that's, right. that's zooming in along with an Ash, but you might be able to do it. Well, it is Tempest Team versus Carnage Gaming, a couple of teams in week number one, unable to find momentum. Game number one on Ice Mines, interestingly enough, is where we will do battle to find ourselves a leader here in our Brazilian set this fine Thursday of Paladins moving forward. You know, you look at the, the Strix, the ability for some high damage backline, then you got a Zin dashing forward, an Atlas of Fernando, and a Grover to round it out. It's a very strong draft here, specifically for Ice Mines. Maybe a distinct lack of round the corner pressure, if you're starting to look towards mm -hmm. what some of these sides have drafted for one another. The Bomb King being taken away, definitely strong in that regard, but a lot of direct damage, something maybe we're not quite used to seeing as much of here on Ice Mines. Yeah, I think it means that they want to push forward and take that space instead of just zoning it and holding it back. I mean, Tempest are gonna they're gonna have to sit back with that Atlas, but right. Carnage, they want to push past those corners. They want to see from stage into the main choke. They want to push into windows and not give them a place to really run back. Carnage, though, actually starting a little more passive than I would have expected with the off tank on Tempest kind of pushing forward. But again, Overcharge burns through this shield right now, and this Nando caught out but has plenty of help from this Grover. That's right, walking on a knife edge is the best way to look at Ice Spines. There's Gervin, striking down for first blood. Gives Carnage Gaming a small advantage here, but lots of space control around the back. The Zin fernando combo giving Carnage Gaming a little bit of trouble. No team on the point just yet, but here's your push. Rashao on the back line is going to get one over on Ganchi, and now Zin will fall as well. The Void Grip will put down Insane, and finally Carnage Gaming have broken through, and they're going to build up some point capture. I think Darius might have just gone a little too far out on the right side. He, he was Atlas. He can kind of sit, shoulder peek that corner and trade that damage wise. He shouldn't be able to get free fired on by a Shaw from there as long as he was and just ended up being the first one to go down for effectively nothing. So Carnage are gaining this forward zone, holding this first corner. Gervin, so much damage from the Atlas. If that's a headshot, that's 1200. Shaw needs to be real careful of that. My goodness, but luckily for Carnage Gaming, you lose your front or your backliners rather. You still are able to get yourself this point capture. So this is a big moment for Tempest team to kind of strike back, strike back, push Carnage on the back foot immediately. And some nice shots from Ganchi will certainly help out in that regard. This is going to be tough, Kresnik, fighting right back into a Strix. You're kind of piling forward into massive direct damage. So Tempest team certainly set up for some maybe, uh, you know, good, good success here on the defensive side. Especially with a shield in the way for both angles on the Strix. You try to push him this way, Stasis Field right in the way. Look, in the in the main angle right now, you have to wait that one out. And on the other side, you're walking into a Zin with a Nando shield pairing up. But everybody left Strix? Ganshi alone? He, he managed to get the quick scope, I think, onto Talus. But he got forced back. And so that space got taken by Gervin right away. Well, there's the cripple down onto Darius. And Gervin now has a nice double kill. Around the corner will go, so some important trades to be had here for Carnage Gaming. You want to lose too much, but they do. Redemption will lock one down, and Gervin will fall. That's a spite over onto Scooter. So despite a numbers disadvantage, Tempest team are holding their own here, drawing the line in the snow, per se. Carnage Gaming still searching for a way to break on through. Well calculated on kind of that half retreat there from Tempest. I like the call from Tempest, from Shapiro specifically using the guillotine on Barrett because he's the only one contesting the cart, but mm. rough choice of Immortal by Insane. Yep. Only one left, just bought a little bit of time. He even got his team, forced his team to heal him. The Blossom ended up getting spent on him, and it's a low cooldown, but if Carnage had been willing to push there, they would have been kind of left in a rough position. Carnage are now finally ready to make their move, walking right to the Strix. T2 Ford, invisibility will save him for now, but that Ash is going to be able to track him easily. Yeah, Carnage, they are looking like they're willing to push forward. Rochelle, 10 HP. Ganchi will finish that one up cleanly. Scooter around the backside as Gervin will trade out one kill as well. Down goes the Strix. Good shielding here, but the rest of Carnage haven't quite pushed up with Scooter just yet. Haven't had the ability to, so this Barrack is going to have to keep himself alive with a little extra healing from his support. Unable to get the turnaround shot. Azin will go into that billow, get himself out nice and alive. Insane continues his pressure on the backside of this fight as well. Carnage Gaming a bit split up here. No real winners or losers. Lots of one-for-one -one trades. 
I was gonna say, I didn't know how I felt about the decision to push the barrack. I mean, if, let's say they shoved up main, right, and fought everyone in front. What does the barrack do? Effectively nothing. Look at that combination! They bursted them. The whirlwind does nothing. They lose another ultimate in overtime. Tempest have a worse mid fight now, and Carnage still might even have a chance to convert this. That's right, so big ultimates maybe to move on through. Shaolin, Barrack, Ash, all with their ultimates ready to go, should they see fit. Can Ares find this kill? Redemption <gasps> stays alive. Just for the moment, though, there's an assert dominance awaiting in the wings as well, or for Shao. Maybe sees an opening there. Ganji getting the kill down on a scooter. Big win now for Tempest team, but immediately answered back by Gervin. A one-for-one -one trade. Respawns are going to be closer for Tempest. Darius will knock down a few kills here, and with Crimson really the last line of defense, this one likely will come to an end with Tempest team grabbing a point. Darius played, I think, great by the end there. I mean, the setback to peel at the very last second was all right, but the fact that he was able to just output so much damage from above, you can really see what the new damage buffs to Atlas were. So glad we got to see the replay of Shapiro flying into the skybox as a ragdoll after he went down from that. But this sink here, you can see that. Look at that combination. Look at the timing of him coming in as soon as he get yep. hit by a Shaolin arrow. Love to see that. Set plays with true power are really what I think make Atlas good on this map. You want characters with good ultimates, but... True power doesn't really do much on its own. You, you can use it to dismount, but all that really does put them in a retake situation. If they have good ults, they can still break through. You set something up with it, whether it be a Geno Assault combo, whether it just be pure damage from someone else to get an insta-kill across the map, and that's when you're really going to see Talus start to shine on this zoning-based map. See, Ares was very happy to use that true power a few moments ago, so still waiting on that charge to come on back now. Aggressive push through by the Talus. Luckily, Oof. the Rune of Travel will keep him alive. Quite low, though. Unable to really push back into this fight. Void grip onto Insane in the dash. Not enough. Ares will plug down that kill. Rochelle, the old up, down, up on the high ground. We'll get Ash in a great position to control some of that space. Unable to get the kill onto Strix just yet, but you have forced him off of the high ground, so maybe that alone is a big win. Rochelle, shoulder bashes, gets out alive wow. as well. Carnage Gaming winning all these trades so effectively. Battering Ram giving so much value, getting him out from there now. And look, the true power combo, he held off, he hesitated, Ooh. but they still stood there and God, she goes down to the time and space. What a combination there from Carnage Gaming Whirlwind. Now back off of cooldown, but right into a Dome Shield. Tempest team are going to be fighting 96% on the point. Nobody from Tempest team in range, and Carnage Gaming will put him down quietly. Tempest team was able to secure a defense largely on the back of answering some kills right on the other end of the mid capture. But it's the opposite. Carnage Gaming already making their way towards the Tempest team base. I think them having no real burst mobility tanks is hurting Tempest a little bit. No one with a, with a decent mobility option, so both tanks are just stuck in the choke in the Immortal. Like, well, I'd go in if I could, but neither of us really can. Potential, I like this rotation right now with Ares down here in the low ground, but kind of abandoned here. Is Shapiro down? Splitting the tanks. They can turn and burn Rashao, but Ares gives himself away, and now Tempest, turn around, deal with the stragglers, and then you can reset and have your normal zone. That's right, no true power to fully re-engage here on this fight, so that will be the end to this push, at least. Superior finding some good kills there on the end. Nice three streak now burning away. I think Rover for Tempest teams found some good value here. 15 streak burning away for Redemption. So keeping that sustain alive for this team pivotal, especially here on the defensive end. Yeah, Grover's great on Ice Mines. Not having to peek to heal, having to getting be able to play around those corners. And on the mid-fight, you're effectively healing everyone. It's so compact that everyone's going to get the benefits of your Blossom and your Whirlwind, whatever you choose to use it. Plus, that Root's a great setup for any other aggressive dive. If you put that Root on somebody that really doesn't want to be hit by it, whether it be, you know, someone trying to get in mobily, a flank or anything, you can really follow up. Look at this, this aggression right now. The Whirlwind yeah. to counter it, but Rochelle's still going in with an Assert Dominance. Yeah, it's going to catch out. The in almost the entire Tempest team roster. Big engage now from Carnage Gaming. And look at what Rashao is doing. They are ripping through Tempest team. Zupiru will be the last one down. The full-on sweep for Carnage Gaming. And Krez, they've still got three ultimates to help push. The barrack pressure was what forced the Whirlwind. And the Rashao following up after with perfect timing. They they have that, that explosive chance. And I think Ash, using her ultimate... So smart. She charges it so quickly. She gets all charge while in it. So if she gets a good amount of the damage from that push, you can get quite a bit back. And they're keeping up this pressure too. Rochelle will get out, but Ooh, these nice. tanks are, are hanging on by a thread. I love what I've seen out of Gervin and the Shaolin so far here this game. Good shield played there up on the high ground. 15 seconds left. Low health bars though for Carnage Gaming. Gotta be careful underneath this archway. Unfortunately, Ares doesn't pay attention. 
to that uh, PSA, so he'll be back. Does have true power if the rest of the team wants to continue moving forward. Zupiru down, but so is Rochau and Scooter. So another successful defense here from Carnage hanging on by the skin of their teeth. It's possible there. I think maybe Carnage could have held off for a second, gotten rehealed instead of constantly trying to poke. Pushing into this map when you don't have any CC to really pull Ganchi out of the spawn when he's sitting up top. I guess they can power him on the edge, but all that's going to do is punch him right back into the spawn room to be invincible and continue to repeat exactly how he was before. It's hard to push when you don't have full HP, so maybe a little more patience back up, get some passive healing. They're not going to be able to move up that quickly with the tanks that they have, and they go in with full HP instead of kind of having almost no health on both tanks during right when that overtime needed to get procced. Ultimate's heading into this too. Actually, almost everything up for Tempest and through time and space missing from Carnage because of that attempt earlier. Only halfway to assert dominance as well. So I think this is a bit of pressure actually on Gervin, I'm going to say. If he can avoid the flare and get some good damage with the Heat Haze on the side, that could be the opening because otherwise they really just have the counters. Oh, it's Ganchi who will be true powered immediately rewound. What a play there from Tempest. Team's going to send Ares right back to where he came from. Immortal into the dome shield. So the front lines countering out their ultimates here. Scooters found the kill. Ares is finally gunned down insane as well. Two kill swing for Carnage Gaming. Three members of Tempest team trapped up on the high ground, but they're going to get collapsed upon here. Kresnik and Ares is going to have an absolute field day. It's a double kill for the Talus and Carnage Gaming wipe Tempest team. The pinch is brutal. I, I think Nando and Zin, I, I like the idea of immortaling into the dome shield, but Zin, I guess they didn't just say when it was ending because he just stood there in the flamethrower like, my Nando will save me, and it just <laughs> was not enough. Pressure from short right now is just stalled out by Ares too, and I think, again, lack of burst mobility. I don't think Tempest is going to touch the point. Well, it doesn't look like it here. 99% for Carnage Gaming. A chance to take game number one now. Get themselves their first map win of the phase with a successful push here. Now you got that assert dominance. I mean, you remember back to really what opened the door to a potential push last time, and it was a massive opening play from Carnage Gaming, trading out the ultimate so effectively. Then it was Rochelle deep into the back line of Tempest team that really locked them in place. But that is also maybe Krizna kept some of those ultimates down towards the final push Ooh. here, and said Rochelle is gonna press down on the gas. Upiru catches that one. Rochelle unfortunately not able to melt down as much damage as he was maybe hoping for, and actually doesn't buy all that much pressure. Does get the kill, but Tempest team stands strong. He's given two people out of the fight, and the shield, it doesn't save him from the shoulder bash. It, he wasn't doing much damage-wise, but he just traded back and forth and just absorbed a guillotine as well. That can't stop the cart now, so that's utility. The Tempest just lose. That's a good point. It's not always about uh, getting in the kill feed. It's about helping your team move themselves forward, and Rochelle is absolutely able to do that there, but Zupiru on the other side is going to keep Carnage Gaming at bay just for a little bit longer. Double kill from the Zin is going to slow things down. A moment of respite here, really, for both squads. Carnage Gaming have the more immediate ultimate utility here, Kresnik, so you kind of get the feeling if they swing quick, they might be able to roll this one in. They could even do the, the combo I was talking about earlier, true power potentially into a time and space. Ares is sitting there taunting actually just to see, but just waiting to collapse Ooh, with his nice. team. And the first one goes down, great pinch, and they can now. follow up. Uh, this might be the time for Carnage Gaming. Two down, three left defending from Tempest Team. Might not even have to use all of your ultimates. There's the Whirlwind. Popped up by Tempest Team. Keep themselves alive a little bit longer. Darius around the back. Does not have his cooldowns, but in the nick of time, he sure does. Dome Shield dropped down now by Carnage Gaming. True power being looked at through time and space. Catches down onto a couple. Darius down. Zapiru, same for him as well. One kill traded out by Ganji. But the contest will come to an end with Tempest Team once the stealth wears out falling down and Carmenage Gaming will take Ice Mines. They almost missed him. They, he actually they appeared to, he managed to get a shot. If he got one more shot off, maybe they don't have the damage to finish him off, but Strix can't contest for that long. And Tempest, I thought their defenses were, were fine. I think they were, they were taking yep. the room that they needed to not let them get to a position where they can go deep. But as soon as they lost Insane, they weren't paying enough attention to Ares. Once he got to pinch, get, catch Nando in those four seconds of weakness, it, it fell apart. They needed both their tanks alive all the time. Yeah, and he, he, I, I kind of look at this Zen pick as well. I think it found okay value at times. It was sort of these moments where, you know, the double kill kind of keeps Tempest team in the game. Uh, decent kills, decent assists, but, you know, 8, 12, and 6, difficult from uh, one of your damage dealers. Harda, though, I think, just to look at Zupiru, Darius, insane, rough games to be anyone on the front line there, as you point out, Kresnik. So sort of more overwhelming, I think, from Carnage Gaming, put Tempest team on the back foot consistently. 
yeah, I think the pressure that Carnage were able to put out constantly was made it hard for Tempest to really finish off any any kills that they wanted to get with Zin following up. I mean, Guillotine, I think, were most of his kills, but look back at the right. mid-fight. You see how, how Rashao is playing. He's so deep in their windows, drawing him out, and they can't contest Gervin at all. They're, they're walking through Barn, which walks right into everybody else, or they're trying to walk through Rashao, which, which they just can't do. The Sniper never has a chance to duel him, so Gervin just free fires, and you can see why I think Shaolin has this high priority in, in Brazil. With the ability to just cripple these tanks that can't move in, cancel any sustainability they have, Sha can just control the map if protected properly. That's right. We, we've started to see this small rise from Shaolin, and there are these moments this game where Gervin just volleys off. Almost uncontestable damage, and this, this was a really brilliant fight from Carnage Gaming. Uh, so I, I think that's great for, for Carnage. I mean, obviously it's great for Carnage. Finally, get yourself on the board here in this phase. Get yourself some momentum moving forward. You start to look at Tempest team, though. Now fourth map loss, I guess, in a row if you look at the last two sets combined. So they'll now look towards our next map, which will be Jaguar Falls, to maybe get something going. Yeah, and Jag Falls is, is, can be an equalizer if they feel like they're confident on it. There's definitely teams that can collapse on this map that don't play the rotation game. Properly, sure. if you play on the wrong side, you can get surrounded so easily, but if this is their pick, which I'm assuming it is with them being second pick on the first map, I, they're going to feel confident on it. I'd hope they can play some of those more flat ground characters, maybe pull out the Lex we've been seeing a little bit more in Brazil, and denying those blasters still, a map with tight choke points, can you can find a lot out of the Bomb King if it got through. That's right. I, I, you know, I, I will never question a Bomb King ban, especially not on Jaguar Falls, one of his best maps, if not his best map so uh, a strong start there i think for tempest team vivian as well it's going to take a back seat here i don't imagine that changes very much here in the near future shaolin though that's a big pivot so he was you know lower on the pick ban rate at least through week number one starting to see this slow rise is he at the point now Krez, where you think he is truly ban worthy if there's a good shaolin on the other team maybe if you if you think your game plan will get stopped by him entirely oh, he has that, that directed cripple across the map every few seconds, so if you want mobility, you gotta get rid of him. I'm gonna be honest though, Dave, I am unsure why Moji is in the ban column. Maybe it's a target to Tempest app since they targeted them, but after her changes, she doesn't live this long. She's not as good at actually getting in and getting out like she used to be able to. And, and I guess it's sort of the same conversation as we had way back, is like only mm, Jaguar Falls is where we might see Moji. She, event, she sort of in the first phase of the PPC started to branch out into to more of a, you know, a wider map pool. Now maybe it's truly back to just maybe a specific player on a specific map, kind of King Kaiser status over here in Brazil. Uh, maybe for Carnage Game. We'll see if it pays off as the rest of the picks start to flow through. Ash and Talus, a strong start there. Plenty of lockdown if you look at the assert dominance. Uh, and the true power. I loved the combinations that we saw there through... Uh, the, the through time and space and the true powers in game number one, Kresnik. So I, I like what Tempest team have started with here for game number two. This is definitely a we have to win early start for them. They're so dependent on lifesteal with Grand Design and Corvus. Talus having overcharged lifesteal, Primeval Might, Ash with the Indomitable card giving her lifesteal as well. If Carnage can get to the late game, I think they have a comp that, that can with the stalling factor of Zinn and Cassie right now. That Tempest team's comp as of these first three picks will fall off. It won't be, they won't be living as long. These duels are going to go a little bit more in favor of Carnage, especially with the ability for them to just disengage if the fight goes wrong. Cassie's got two rolls, Zinn's got all these cooldowns. Mm -hmm. Damba's going to be speeding them away too. Just a lot of ways for them to buy time to get to this caught three Champions are made by the Victor going shows. unbanned, Not largely because Moji great. and Shaolin are banned, as interesting as that might be. So in need of a strong performance here for Tempest Team. Hasn't lost yet 50% in the pick ban column for Victor 100% in that win rate column, so that's going to be put to the test up against a very strong Carnage Gaming team. Terminus to round things out here. Haven't seen him over in Brazil just yet. 0% pick rate, 20% in the win rate column. Do you think he works on Jag Falls? Oh, I think so for sure. It's a, it's a tight map. You can lock down one specific angle. Hard for you to get surrounded unless you already got overwhelmed from another lane, so Term is great, I think. Victor might be a little easier to pressure if this is in, decides to go into the back line instead, but that Andro can just slow down that, I think, having these two right. flankers is going to make it harder for him to not be under pressure the whole time. And Jaroxas has not lost yet. Another 100% win rate being put to the test here in game number two. Chris, you kind of look at both sides. You look at Jaguar Falls. 
you lean in one way or the other. I mean, Carnage Gaming, they got Cassie, Inara, Zin, Andro, Damba. That's a lot of damage running at you. For me, I think it's going to come down to the first mid. If Tempest come out swinging and they just dominate those first two, I think the snowball, the credits, and the way that their comp works can just outpace Carnage. But if Carnage sure. holds strong, play that objective, I I can see them as they get far enough to get caught three, they just probably have it down. A little more tradition from Tempest team. Double tank, double damage. Carnage Gaming opting for something a little bit more new age, maybe with that triple DPS composition that has seen so much success recently, particularly Sanguine over in North America. So this is a big one for Carnage Gaming, also for Tempest team, this uh, this particular mid fight. If you're able, for, as Carnage, to get started on the right foot this early on, bodes well for the rest of the game. Maybe Ares has to billow away very early here, stick his nose where it doesn't belong to start off Supiru, maybe around the side. Gervin though, shuts down Ganchi for first blood of the game and Carnage Gaming off to a great start. The health was really bad on Carnage, but no one else was really willing to wow, follow up flanked. and now the collapse is gonna come. They were just surrounded from the start date. I feel like we see this on Jag Falls. It, it, yeah. One kill and then you, you kind of forget about who's behind you and eventually you just get collapsed upon. Brilliant for Carnage Gaming, especially when we're talking about how Tempest team needs to be the ones that are off to this sort of start at 78 percent and a great zone out now from carnage gaming i'm not sure tempest team is going to have a chance to move their way through just a couple more takes away and carnage gaming already on the push i think the way that they started it with ganchi diving in but rochelle was already leaving and and caught him i believe on that retreat so there was no way for him to commit for that kill he went in without a rune didn't have his way out and now they could just continue to get Snowball Ganchi again, a little isolated ahead of the rest of his team, because no one else wants to push into that damage. He's the only one with no fear, and it, it's kind of hurting the rest of his team so far. I'm not sure Tempest team has gotten a kill yet. I think Carnage Gaming have been undying from the start and, roll, and continue to move this cart forward. Everyone's on a streak, so that would at least support my assumption here at this point. There you go. Ofers across the board for Tempest team now, so hopefully the Barrage can find some damage, maybe change that out. Doesn't find much here. Now Carnage Gaming starting to get some of those ultimate shards. It's a Dread Serpent to push in. Gervin, he's found the flank right on in. Zupiru goes down. The punch will connect. Gervin is going to top up that reversal, keep himself alive for the moment. Dash up to the sky, a cursed arm ready. Should he need it around here, but Carnage Gaming, Krez, kind of uncontested. Now Insane has to drop his way down to contest this cart here. Dash on forward as well as Gervin hangs nice and low, and Carnage Gaming... Do give up one kill. Darius grabs the one, but Carnage Gaming grabbed their second point of the game. And you know the rest of Carnage are just roasting Crimson right now Astrid. for, for getting, getting dove by, <laughs> by the Ash in the middle of that cap. Uh, that was, I think, Crimson's play on the Domba on the cart was, was perfect. Every person who dove in and slightly disengaged were right in the healing lane. He was watching exactly what he needed to to give everyone the burst heal that they need from the Spirits Chosen. I, I want to mention, since this build is up here, this is the second time we've seen Damba kind of bypassing the speed card to play many Gords instead. You have Gords pretty often in the late game for Damba once you hit that Kronos 3, but that speed is going to be good from the start to the finish. Right. I, I do find it strange that they're kind of going away from that, especially with the you have. You can speed up all your DPS to push corners faster. It helps them in duels for these stutter steps. It's an interesting choice and one that, I mean, it seems to be paying off for him so far, but we'll see how it goes later in the game as they're trying to live through this dive, both of them together, and they, they just lost Rishaw around the corner. Well, the second kill of the game is Redemption will now snag one, but Gervin had made his way all the way around the back of Carnage Gaming here. Ganchi is able to finally get rid of Rishaw. So an advantage capitalized on eventually. Crimson locked down, no by Darius, has to slither his way away. Nobody from Tempest team on the point just yet. They're looking for these kills, but they're unable to do so. Gervin, the reversal, absor absorbs the damage, turns it around, down goes Ganchi. Tempest team finally on the point, but you're losing your members in the meantime. Carnage Gaming are gonna restorm the gates in just a moment. A double kill from Rashao, reanimate, used by Insane. It's a triple kill elsewhere, and the fight is Cassie starting to heat up for Carnage Gaming, and at 63%, I'm not sure they're gonna look back. Insane actually was so lucky that Gervin didn't walk towards him. He was just out of range to hit that reversal so they couldn't get it in time. Wait, they didn't use the slither. No, he went past the point to the Zin. He went past the point. He oh, missed no, it, Dave. Deposit. He missed the contest. He might not make it back in time. Well, we wait with bated breath. It is 96% for Carnage Gaming on the point as we speak. Ganchi 
through the archway on the, the wrong side of things. So I, I'm not sure. I mean, Talus moves quickly. Uh, but an, what? Well, Rune of Travel doesn't send you right back through, so I, I guess it no. wouldn't be able to contest. I, I think this is Carnage Gaming t t to lose. It should be. It depends on if Ganshi has the punch. He's not going for it. I guess he's waiting a second, comes in from another angle instead. So they get it, but he's feared. He dodged it with the Rune. Yeah, the Rune takes it on back, but the Dread Serpent is going to keep Tempest team at bay elsewhere in this fight. What a fight back in, Ganshi. Some movement, we thought it was maybe an overextension, but instead it's right where he wanted to be. Now Scooter goes down, Crimson half HP as well. Gervin around the side here as it's 93% reached for Tempest team. I'm sure if Carnage Gaming are going to have the ability themselves now to get back in. It's three down, Tempest team. They grabbed themselves a point after it looked like Carnage Gaming was going to run away with it. All on the back of Ganshi too. I mean, I think the Damba slithered the true power initially, which is why he wasn't able to get the contest, but he he called it. He they ended up having overtime for him to rotate all the long way around, paying off perfectly. And his sync with Darius right now, great as well. That he's pressuring on the side, buying room for him, and now they push, they think Talus is on that side, they don't know he's coming up secret. Well, this is big defense time now for Carnage Gaming, able to push it to 3-1 on the next mid fight. Would put Tempest in a very awkward spot. Need, need a little bit more, maybe, out of this uh, victor, rather. We've seen some barrages, you know, maybe connect for a little bit of damage, but I don't think it's quite found the mark that maybe Tempest team are drafting it for. This is just a hard map for Victor. I, I feel bad for Shapiro trying to play it on here. Even even against just a Zin, you're constantly... They're just walking away from you, and if you push, it's a close area, and they probably beat you out there with, with shields or whatever. Duel in the back line. Ares, look at him. They're, he's pulling him all the way back. They're going to ult for him. Well, as I said, Zupiru does get the kill over on the Gervin, so listening in, maybe now is going to turn the tide for Tempest team. This card is going to continue its long march forward. It's going to have the archway soon. First break point here for Carnage Gaming. They burnt a lot of time off the clock, though. Big ultimate's ready to go. A stun down now. As the ultimate is used now by Anara, Gervin as well is going to bring out the Accursed Arm. Dash right on through, so now Gervin not connecting with maybe as much damage as he was hoping for, but you did buy some time if you're Carnage Gaming, and maybe that's all you need. I, a little bit of a slow follow-up from the rest of Carnage, though. That seismic crash, if the team had been just a little bit closer, they waited one more second, maybe it would have ended up getting those kills. But they got the defense anyway, they're pushing back, even trading Crimson out, they still cleaned up the rest of Tempest, even if they did have to spend the Accursed Arm as well for it, with only 35 seconds remaining. I, I like how Zin's the only one going forward. He'll probably be able to get away in time. As long as they get the dismounts, that's all they really need. They just forced him back through another choke point that they have to break through with the time bleeding away. That's right, we're back to regaining some of that ultimate charge time now. If you're Carnage Gaming, this duel here maybe spells oh, the end to it. Darius going down, so... It's going to take a while for that Ash to get back in the fight. Insane still in range, though. You're going to want this Terminus to be the one that's really providing the contest here with the ring quite close. Ganchi will be able to move forward, maybe get a touch on it as well. A nice wall, actually, in the mid. Really Perfect. divides this one out. They have to go the long way around, and Carnage Gaming locked down their third point. And Carnage actually almost got super unlucky there because the cart was rolling back. If he had hugged the wall, he might have <laughs> just entered the contest circle as the cart ended up pulling backwards, but... Time was on their side, which is how the defense works anyway. You just play to bleed out that time. A couple ultimates that were spent by Carnage going to be missing now on this, both the Seismic Crash and the Accursed Arm that they combined to be able to kind of lock that area down. And a couple in the in everything, basically, set up for Tempest team. I, I think they play aggressive with Insane first and have Darius follow up once he gets a little bit of damage, get that Assert Dominance, and then get that afterwards. There's no resiliences on their side at all yeah. of Carnage Gaming, so... That oh, that ultimate is going to be massive if you can catch just two people with it with even the tiniest amount of follow-up. Big one here for Tempest team. They didn't quite get the ball rolling early as they had hoped. Now you're trying to avoid going down 0-2 here in this best of five set. Put Carnage Gaming in a very dominant position. Ares makes his way in. Zubiru, no room to operate here. Dread Serpent elsewhere in this fight. Rune of Travel dropped down by Ganji. Ares is just going to hang into this area. Spike does not connect here, but does pivot him to the side. Counter. That one goes out here as the reanimates used by Insane. Tempest team all forced back. Into the waterfall side of the map here. Carnage Gaming start to roll themselves in, but Ganji is going to get rid of Ares. The Seismic Crash is going to look for a little bit of something here, but Carnage Gaming is not able to capitalize. Zupiru, oh, the final shot from Rashad would have gotten it done, but he doesn't quite hit it here as Carnage Gaming still hang on up 57 to 31. 
I can't believe Carnage recovered from not watching Shapiro spawn. The fact that he just came in from main uncontested, fired on three of them, and that most of them walked away it was crazy. But finally, they follow up on Rishiao, get wow. that kill at the end. How are they going to make it in? Nara's actually kind of low, but Shapiro's not looking. They might just bleed someone out for this. It's the second wind fights in the mid that keep working for Tempest team. Now Ares goes down. I have to send someone in. Crimson getting plucked away by Ganji. Rochelle, though, hits the big shots. Crimson down. No more healing for Carnage Gaming for the rest of this mid. The damage is just going to have to get it done on their own. Shapiro around the side. Insane knocked back. Rochelle lives with 300 HP. Scout is out now as Insane makes his way into the corner. That's the crush on down. Darius behind his shield turns, gets the shot onto Rochelle. Spite out of the ash now. Redemption is going to try to slide his way through. Overtime is on, though. The rune of travel right on back. Carnage Gaming still in control here. Tempest team, no route in, and Carnage Gaming take the map. Gervin just cleaning up at the end with the follow up from the Zin. Yeah. This double flanker is so strong. When you, when you, no matter what heal you have, it doesn't matter whether it's Corvus, Genos, Damba, Grover, Furia. If you have two skilled players on flankers and they're just running the enemy team down, they're good enough. They'll just win. They'll just win their duels. True. And if they have the immune cooldowns, there's really nothing that the other team can do about it. A quick look at the post-game stats here. Gervin on this Androxus, 12, 4, and 10. Rashao, despite some moments where he was heavily locked down by Tempest team, a great slash line there for him as well, 11, 6, and 14. Big damage numbers from the three damage dealers. Yupiru, I said they needed a little bit more from the victor, I think, finally found its stride, able to top damage here in this game, but just way too much from Carnage Gaming for Tempest to withstand. Yeah, I think having Victor into double flanker is, is a struggle on, on a map like this where you can get ambushed from so many different places and the wide angles that you're taking are only really good on offense. You know, when you can hold that space, especially when Ares' Zin is just able to, to run on you, delete a tank and then walk at you, you have no way to really live it. Interesting choice by Redemption. I actually didn't notice that at first, but that's definitely one way to, to unstagger yourself. I just think the triple DPS play from Carnage was just on point the whole time. The Damba, yep. having a Damba healed them all, being able to come back to him all the time, I think just shows how coordinated they are as a team. That's right, and there are these big flanks where, uh, you know, the Androxus would make his way around the back, Gervin would kind of flank through, next time it's somebody else. I, I really like what I saw out of Carnage Gaming here, versatility in playstyle and how you want to get things done. Here's the what would what would be a triple kill just down the line there from mm -hmm. Gervin to seal off that game. All right, so now... We're into game three, Carnage Gaming. It's a little bit closer in game one. Game two here, kind of blow Tempest out of the water. It's on to Bright Marsh though, Kresnik, uh, a map where we can see some snowballing happen here as well. Carnage Gaming with all the momentum. And I might keep it if Tempest can't really fix up their draft. A team that's been playing for a while knows you really don't want Victor on Jag most of the time, especially against sure. the comp that I thought they were pulling out. They could have pulled out, if they really want an auto hit scan, just get a Tyra at that point. Mercy kill. She's so much better into flankers than that Victor. She can actually sit there and fight. Victor will be a little more potent on this map, so Carnage, True. get rid of it. They know they have a kind of a tendency to lean towards it, so just get it out of the picture, get rid of that life steal, and force them onto these different picks instead. Imagine there'd be a Vivian band somewhere to follow up instead. It's a Talus, so now it's Tempest team who have to decide what they want to let through for first pick and then what they're going to leave their pool open for with those next two. That's the, the big back and forth swing, and it is not a Vivian. Instead, it's a Bomb King for the third time in a row banned out by Tempest team. Wonder if that means Carnage Gaming have to reach for this Vivian with their first pick, and they sure do. As they should. I mean, Vivian is, is immense right now, able to rotate very quickly, really hard to dive. She has a long distance CC that also gives away your position, even if you find it first. So just a lot of utility out of this Vivian and, and raw DPS as you want from your damage dealer. Now the only auto left is Tyra. She's still playable on this map, but Tempest, I think smartly prioritize a flanker instead. Zin can at the very least buy time from the Vivian. He, she can, he can go past her, he can counter on the other side, he can billow away, especially when he's protected. And Inara, as the tank in front of her, wall her off, just soak the damage with damage reduction. A couple different ways to react to an uncontested Vivian through windows. That's right. So Tempest team, the, the answer back, it's always, are, are the next two going to be back. worth the one? And Tempest team seem to think think so with that Zin and Nara they have locked in. Genos as well, pretty heavily, uh, you know, prioritized over what we've seen the last mm -hmm. few weeks. Going to get locked in here. Now you think about a Luminary mark on this Vivian ripping through the health bars of Tempest team. Very difficult. Barrack has the potential to top damage in these games when he's got a Luminary at his back as well. 
Carnage Gaming, it just yells damage to me. And I don't think that's all that ridiculous of a statement. I, I think they are going to opt for similar strategy from what we've seen. Let's bulldoze over Tempest team. And it, it's smart, I think, from what Carnage have picked so far on this map. Just raw DPS, as you said, and I think Damba as a response is we good too. You can speed up your Inara. He has basically 20% passive DR all the time if you're running Possession 5, which you probably should be if you're playing Damba against players that are going to get on you. Atlas 2 to follow up. Regardless of what talent he ends up using, having a stasis field, you know, any shield that can just negate all damage that goes into it, it doesn't matter how much it takes, it will stay up for that set amount of time, gives them a chance to execute, it gives them a chance to actually set things up and make a move off that, but Androxus can just ignore it and go over it, and that's what Carnage is looking for. After what we saw from Androxus in our last game, you know, it's hard to bet against that. Now you round out your drafts with a con. Uh, first time over in Brazil. Looks like we're going to see that one. Zero percent pick ban so far from him. Uh, yeah. So Vivian, Genos, Barrick, and Droxus Khan. That is a strong draft. Now we get a look at Leon for only uh, one of a few times we've seen her here so far in phase two of the PPC. Uh, which draft are you looking at here for Bright Marsh? Gets you a little more excited. I think Carnage is. I think the raw damage is going to be sick, and I think the Khan as a counter pick to the Zin, if they, you try to hit him with the guillotine, he just battle shouts it, he lives, you've lost all this utility, you're not seeing him very much, it's a good pocket pick to see after the changes he's had. Well, here we go, Paladins fans. Game number three between Carnage Gaming and Tempest Team. This would even out Carnage in the standings as well. Remember, negative three right now in that map win-loss. Getting the 3-0, very important as far as tiebreakers go, especially if it's some of those top teams starting to dominate this region. 4-1 in game one and two. Can Carnage Gaming do it here in game three? Bright Marsh will let us know. It's the, the overwhelming raw damage, I think, from Carnage that we have to look at here, Kresnik. But uh, this Leon pick, we got a moment to, to really talk about her. Uh, where do you think she slots into Bright Marsh? I think she can play on either side. Probably going to start in the window since they're running Opportunity and Chaos. Not really going to play that CC. Just sit there, free fire, try to protect her from Shapiro potentially pushing on the sides. But you can see, actually, just put Ares in main. Stand right yep. there. The shield's going to be up for now. All he has to do is wait, rotate to window, and this Inara taking a lot of aggro force to wall. If they push her after this is over, they could get some early damage onto this point. Gervin, one more flank. We'll get... Wow. Billion health bar down to about half, and one final headshot will help Ares get the kill onto Insane. The dominoes now beginning to fall as Tempest team have lost both of their frontliners. Gervin will find the final shot, maybe a punch over on Naganji. Now Tempest team are all but swept out as a couple members left standing. Carnage Gaming storm through to the Tempest side of the map. There was no map control in apartments at all from Tempest team. They just let sure this Androxus and this Khan take take that space, and, and they owned it. That's how they won it. You know, they got surrounded. Inara literally got shot from apartments when she was leaving to the pit, to the edge on the side of the map. So when you give a map control, you lose angles like that, stuff you don't think about that might be the difference between life and death when you're rotating away or just losing the point like that. Here we go, Carnage Gaming. They strike first on map number three chance to make it two now the successful push and this is already looking dire for tempest team i mean push back kind of your to your halfway point this is the area though where you need to make this stand finding a pick over onto aries a perfect start to zupiru will dive in we figured that's what we would see this zin buying time buying space and now even getting a kill onto this vivian getting rid of aries a big win for tempest team yeah, agreed, especially with the follow-up on Gervin using the ultimate to take him down. But wait a minute, no one's turning around. They get rid of Redemption in the back. Rochelle literally just walks in through apartments, again, being relatively uncontested, and kills the support. They're not going to be able to stay there. All the damage that hits is going to stick. So Carnage can just bleed him out with the Geno Seals at this point. Seems to be a problem, huh, for, for Tempest, where somebody from Carnage just sort of walks around the backside of their team and, and does a good bit of damage as far as health pool goes. That's no different. Maybe the difference between Tempest team pushing fully back towards the mid and Carnage Gaming picking up right where they left off a few moments ago. Look how low the health bar is here. Cooldown's used by Darius, and that's unfortunate as a double kill from Gervin is going to connect. Now, one more shot for the triple, but Crimson will take it. Ganchi takes one with him, though, as Ares now goes down. Insane. Good bit of healing there. And that's a great magnifying glass with the health pool of Inara at work, but a killing spree for Gervin, and this card's getting close. Buying time when they did, though, might give them a chance to refi, but they're not going to have any heals for it. it. This is basically how good is this Atlas Temporal Divide going to be. Looks like it'll buy him a little bit of time, but they're already pushing through it, and his health bar is low, but just enough time to get an Aura back. Oh, 
Oh, Darius though goes down immediately on the end of the Temporal Divide. Carnage Gaming slowing things down here, realizing that a one-man advantage despite a height... Or, or with the height advantage, rather, for Tempest Team, not enough to fight back into. Insane low around this tree. Ares just trying to build up some of that charge. Zufiru, down he goes. Ganji trades out one. Insane taken down by this Vivian. It's the Atlas now that is void gripped up. Second chance moves right back in range of the payload, and the cart will roll on in. Carnage Gaming go up two. I, I love watching Varric in the last second contests because he's so short, he just sits behind the payload and everyone forgets right. that he's there. It's only Inara poking him. He just has a general spark on him and the DPS on high ground are like, what do you mean they're contesting? I don't <laughs> see anything. He's able to just slip it away right past him. Ares, I, I wouldn't be shocked to see him pushing Bulldozer or, or Deft Hands at this point. He's just sitting there firing into an Inara wall uncontested because everybody on Tempest team is stacking the same side of the map. They have no aggressive off tank, so they have to sit back and wait. Shapiro doesn't really want to do that. He's basically just saying, well, I hope my ult is, is enough once they push into us, but they don't need to. Gervin doesn't have a lot of fall off or shout, doesn't need to go that close, and he lives through guillotine anyway. I think Carnage just have Tempest number right now, and Tempest need to fight this right side a little more, but it looks like they're just going to stare down mid instead. Well, the one bit of hope that Tempest had was flanking around, getting the kill onto Ares and overpower. Great target there. Get rid of big health pool, big damage for Tempest Team. Now 4v5, fighting back in our Tempest Team. Carnage Gaming are going to send Gervin around the left-hand side here. Insane realizes there's damage awaiting around the corner. Through time and space used, doesn't connect. Good damage traded right back in onto Gervin. Going to force him back for a second. Insane does finally end up going down. 50% for Tempest Team, but Carnage Gaming have had the positioning. They have Tree completely locked down. They're going to actually dome so aggressive. It, it forces the, the Dread Serpent, but they can't even refight it. They're just sitting here, and they're trying to contest on the outside, but no one's going to be able to make it even close to the point. That's a Void Grip up. Second chance to use. Ganchi does get the kill onto Ares. So there's a small win for Tempest Team. Fast cap on their side. Darius, so low, though. Crimson is going to end up getting the kill. Enlightenment reversal, not in time, but the turnaround shot is. Just looking towards that window, wondering if the opening will be there, and it is under Shapiru. Now floating around the back, Ganji gets a few shots from Gervin, down he goes, the delayed double now, the slither forward, not back into the point just yet, insane, locked down by Ares, Garnage Gaming one point away from taking the set. And Tempest almost didn't even have that, if, if literally if Crimson had just turned, Tempest would have not even had that overtime, to be able to think about it. Ares, I, opportunity cast, you don't see it as much anymore, but I like how Ares is uh, still applying what I taught him when I was coaching, because he used to stop shooting. And I said, please never stop shooting, and he is still right. doing that to this day. Pushing there, they lose their off tank again. Just no map control at all from Tempest. Tempest team suddenly a lot angrier at you, Kresnik, for, for teaching Ares what he knows <laughs> and what he's doing to them here. A triple kill for Gervin. My goodness. Look at those streaks as well. Carnage Gaming, 5, 10, 19, and a pair of 23s. This has been lopsided since the, uh, the first cart really rolled through on this defensive end. A small push back. Not to be here for Tempest Team. This is going to be a difficult one to hold it back. Really early Temporal Divide, and I think it's a little too far back. Now it runs out, and what does Atlas do for the next 20 seconds other than basically nothing? As the rest of the team just walks up, they just take all the ground they want. Atlas, no sustain. He immediately goes down. Gervin having himself a set and a half here will punch down Darius. Back down he goes, realizing one final shot from the Leon would have gotten it done, but Ganji isn't going to have the life to do that here. A cursed arm rains down damage. Insane falls and Carnage Gaming 4 0 on Bright Marsh, 3 0 in the set. Yeah, don't let Vivian through. Uh, it's She's such a dominant character, especially when you don't have a way to really get on her. You know, draft a Rom, draft a Ruckus, something right. to dive this Vivian in the back line where she might falter. <laughs> Otherwise, I mean, you see, they pressured him. They pressured Ares. They tried to catch him out. But by that time, they no one was looking at Gervin, and they let him go 14-1. and one. Yeah, 4-20 and 20 there for Scooter. So great from the barrack on the front line. 64,000 damage for Ares, but it really, Gervin, I think, it, it continues to impress me here for this Carnage Gaming mm -hmm. team. Everyone obviously doing their job. I mean, it's a team win. You always have to say it, but uh, I think this Androxus brings such a unique ability for, for one player to just have a hot day, and Gervin had one here. It just constantly was a thorn in the side of Tempest team. Can you believe this man was playing off tank? Can you believe that this guy was, was playing Ash? And, yeah, something seemed and, off, right? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you can see his, his talent on Androxus. He used to be a ringer for SSG a lot in the past. Whenever anyone was missing, Gervin was one of the guys they would go to right away. And you can see why he was able to keep up at that level with those teams, you know, communicating with them that way, having 
some holdover synergy from there with Ares. Haven't played with him before. I think he's been a, a sleeper for this team for a while, and now that he's on DPS, he's kind of he's awake now if he was a sleeper before. Well, there you go. There's the update that Carnage Gaming needed. Right back to even, so Slate somewhat wiped clean after what we saw in week one. Still going to be playing catch-up with a few of those top three teams, but, but at least have themselves in a point where they're able to contest. That's 3-0 for Carnage. Ignite and In Control both be battling here, so that's a big one to look out for as far as those top three teams go. Fatal Ambition have the unfortunate drop going against Parallax. Down to North America, though, Kresnik, I think Flashpoint versus Pickled Pepper is going to be an interesting one to watch. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm super excited to see it, especially with roster changes that they've had. Maybe I should save that for after the break, but maybe not. Either way, we're going to see some roll swaps on their side against Pickle Pepper, this team of some some grizzled console veterans. So I'm excited to see them the new look on Flashpoint clash with the new team in Pickle Pepper. Yeah, but I think Pickled Pepper wins in the name department. I just, you, you have to smile True. every time you say it. So if nothing else, they've already gotten like a, an asterisk one on the board, at least as far as, uh, <laughs> as my ratings go here going into this set. That's a quick one over here in Brazil. Carnage Gaming were able to fight back after week one woes. 3-0 here, in, or uh, 3-0 win, rather, in week number two. Tie up their standings at one apiece in the win-loss column. North America, ladies and gentlemen, right up next, Flashpoint Pickled Pepper. Stick around. <laughs> 